This was a journey to one of the most secretive places on Earth. We started in Wonsan, on North Korea's east coast. The 14 carriages of this train staffed by soldiers of the Korean People's Army. Ahead, a 400 kilometer journey north into the mountains. Okay, we're going. Government minders escorted us at all times. All the window blinds were pulled shut and we were ordered not to open them. But we filmed some of this rarely seen countryside on our way. Our train was bound for Pungo Ri, the heart of North Korea's nuclear weapons program. No journalist had ever seen it. Sky News was the only UK broadcaster invited. 11 hours later, traveling through the night, we arrived at Jadok Ri, a small station near the test site. We'd been invited to watch Pungo Ri be destroyed. It was meant to be a gesture of goodwill ahead of the US North Korean summit. That gesture was spurned by President Donald Trump. The talks canceled. At this point, neither we nor the North Koreans knew that was coming. Pungo Ri. The North Koreans have detonated six nuclear weapons to date since 2006, all of them in tunnels underneath these mountains. We've driven for an hour and a half to get here. We weren't allowed to take pictures on the way. They deleted some of the footage we did take, but this is what we've come here to see. This tunnel has seen five nuclear weapons exploded since 2009, and now we're about to go in. Those five tests include North Korea's biggest to date, only in September last year, thought to be a massive hydrogen bomb eight times as powerful as the one that destroyed Hiroshima. Inside, the tunnel was ostentatiously wired to explode. This man is the deputy director of North Korea's Nuclear Weapons Institute and holds the rank of general. He told us that we'd see three tunnels collapse, the entrances sealed and the surrounding buildings destroyed. The wind picked up, so we put on our masks, protection against potentially breathing in particles of radioactive dust. It was a precaution. The North Koreans had confiscated our radiation detecting equipment. Then we hiked up to the purpose-built viewing platform to watch the first dismantlement of the tunnel and its adjoining observation center. Three, two, one. The observation tower going up now. We weren't quite sure what to expect. But you can feel the waves, you can feel the dust. It's a big show for us. It's a big show for the world. It's designed to give the impression that North Korea is serious about these negotiations. Officials immediately declared the tunnel completely destroyed and invited us to inspect the debris. According to the experts, uh, the explosion uh, proved very successful. This is the wreckage of the observation centre that stood a bit earlier. That's what's left of the North Tunnel, uh, where the North Koreans exploded five nuclear warheads. As you can see, there are a lot of journalists around. That's the point. They've invited us to come and have a look at the wreckage, rather than experts, rather than weapons inspectors. To my eye, that building looks relatively new. Was it used as an observation centre? It's really hard to tell. The North Korean officers from their nuclear weapons program kept emphasizing that these tunnels were still usable, that they could detonate a bomb within them tomorrow. Instead, they were turning them into tombs. I was told these bags contained plastic explosives. The detonations came quickly. Now. Several North Koreans I spoke to made the same point. Why do people say this is just for show? Why do they doubt our sincerity? Well, much of this was for show. Log cabins can be rebuilt, tunnels can be excavated, entirely new test sites constructed. North Korea has plenty of mountains. But this is a regime that understands the importance and use of images, both at home and abroad. Our presence here was meticulously filmed for propaganda purposes. North Korea was counting on images like this to keep Donald Trump kind. Instead, just a few hours after this moment, the US president cancelled the talks.
The rocks were still coming down as they declared Pungay Reed closed. The general said that the dismantling of the site was transparent, that it attested once again to the proactive and peace-loving efforts of North Korea. Excuse me, oh, sir. Um, your deputy director talked about transparency. How can we verify that the tunnels inside have also been shut? He told us we'd seen it clearly enough with our own eyes. The explosion had come from inside the tunnel. We did see all three tunnel entrances closed, but it's impossible for us to know the extent of the dismantlement. Still, North Korea opened its most secret place to the world, then took it apart. And then the summit was cancelled. Who knows how to pick up the pieces? Tom Cheshire, Sky News at Pungiri nuclear test site in North Korea.